Hi, this is Scott Marshman with eCabinets Tips and Tricks. In this video, we're going to get started on creating a master workbook that we can import all the worksheets from the cut list that eCabinets generates when you export eCabinets cut list to Excel. And for that, we're going to be using a user form. So, let's get started. What I need to do is create a master workbook. So, I'm going to go File and New and Blank Workbook. So here's our blank workbook. I've got one sheet in here. If for whatever reason you have more than one, go you can just delete those. And I'm going to start with one sheet. And I'm going to name that home. And this is going to be my home page. Now I'm going to need a button that I can click to activate that user form. So I'm going to go under shapes here. You can also go insert and shapes. Now I'm just going to select the rectangle. Now I have my snap to grid turned on here. I'm going to just click right in here and make my button whatever size I want. I'm going to change that around a little bit. I'm going to use this color here. I'm going to go to my text field and I'm going to select automatic. I'm going to go shape effects then I'm going to go preset and I'm going to select this one right here. And that's going to make it look like a real genuine button. I need to put in the text that I want to display on this button so I'm just going to click right here and I'm going to type whatever text I want so I've got my text in here now I need to center that up so I'm going to go home and center and center and I can select this text make it bigger if I want to and bold and that gives us a nice looking button now the next thing we need to do is create our user form. So I'm going to go developer here and under visual basics. I'm going to make sure that I am in my VBA project right now. This is says book 7. So let me go ahead and um, save that. And I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to, um, I do want to show you about the save as type here. Now this is important. You need to make sure that if you save it as a macro enabled workbook or an Excel binary workbook and generally I use the binary workbook so so now we can go into developer visual basics and make sure that I'm in this project now if you don't see your project window here or your properties window you can go to view and make sure you select project explorer and then view again in properties window and it'll bring those up so making sure I'm in this VBA project master workbook I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a user form and there's my user form I'm just going to resize it get it to approximately the size that I want it to be by clicking on these handles and dragging it now you can see my toolbox here I've got floating around. If you don't see this toolbox under this toolbar right here, the very last icon is your toolbox. Now if you don't see that I, that uh, toolbar, go to Windows or View, Toolbars, and make sure you got Standard Check. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is put some check boxes in here. So I'm going to click on my checkbox icon and just plop it in here somewhere. Right here the very first thing is the name and this is saying that it is checkbox 1. Now ordinarily you would change the name of this checkbox to something like CB whatever. Um, I'm going to leave this like it is because we're going to use this. So I'm going to leave this just like it is but I do want to make a few more changes. Um, and if you wanted to change the caption right here where it says caption, this is where you could do that. What I want to do is come right here to height. I want to change my height to 20, um, 22 and enter. And then right here, or left, this is the left of the checkbox. And right here, this is the number of pixels from the left of the checkbox to the left side of the user form there. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to put that at about 20. You see it move over there, and the next thing I need to change is the top here, and this is the number of pixels that the top of the checkbox is from 
the top of the field of the user form. I'm going to change that to 20. Now the next thing I want to change is the width. Right now it's at 108. I'm going to change that to 158. You can see that it made it wide. Now I know this is wide enough to accept any length of text that is in this cut list here, these tab names. That will work fine. So what I'm going to do now is I need 14 of these things. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to click copy and I'm going to click paste. Okay, now I'm going to put this one over here. I'm going to do a couple just so I can show you some little tricks here. What I want is I want this one aligned to the top of this one. So I'm going to click on this one, hold down my shift key, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to align tops. And you can see how it put it at the very top, it lined those tops there. I'm going to put one more in here and show you how to align the lifts. So I'm going to notice how this thing will snap to these little dots that's in the in the user form here. I'm going to go ahead and get the height where I want it. And I want one row of dots between each one of my check boxes. So if I click on this one, hold down my shift key, click on this one, right click and align lifts and align it perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and get all 14 of these in here and then come back and show you how to get the command buttons we need. Okay, I've got all 14 checkboxes in here. I need five command buttons. So I'm going to click my command button icon and I'm going to put one right here. Trying to get it lined up with that column there. And I'm just going to copy that. So copy and paste. I'm going to go ahead and get all five of those put in here. Okay, so I've got all five in here. Uh, what I want to do next is rename each one of these. I'm going to do this one and show you how to do that, and then I'm going to go through and redo all these. But before I do that, let me go ahead and resize these, because I know they're going to need to be a little bit wider. So I'm just going to drag this over to where I need it, and I'm going to hold down my shift key, right click, select that one, right click, and go to make same size both. Now, I can change these names and captions. So I've got this one selected. If I come up here to name, I can change the name. So I'm going to type CMD, which is just short for command. And this is going to be my select all. So it's select all. So that's my name, select all. And I can change my caption here. So I can come right down here to caption and change it right here. Or while I've got this selected, I can click in it one more time and you can see the cursor flashing. If I double click, I can just change it right there. So select all. I'm just going to go through and do all of these. So I've got my buttons named here. I've got select all, deselect all, import selected worksheets, delete selected worksheets, and cancel. Now one thing I want to show you. If you look right over here under name, notice how there are no spaces. You cannot have any spaces in your control name there. You can have all the spaces you want in your caption there. Now, what we need to do is uh, program this button that we just made to bring this user form up. Let me go ahead and just resize this just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Uh, one thing that I did forget, however, is the user form here itself. We need to give it a name. So I'm going to go form, select sheets, and go ahead and change the caption. See. I've got select the worksheets to in import. Now we can program our button. So I'm just going to minus down out of this. And I want to right click on my button and I'm going to go to assign macro. Now you see we got rectangle one click. Now I don't want to rename this, I'm just going to click on new here. And we got sub rectangle one click. The only thing I need to do is type this form name in. Okay, so FRM select sheets. And I need to hit dot and show. So that's going to show our user form. 
I click on this, there's our user form. But you can see that it just says check box one all the way down. So we need to program that to automatically put our worksheet name in. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to anywhere in my field here, I can double click and it'll bring up my um, VBA module, or I can right click and I can go to view code. So right now we've got private sub user form click. Now I don't want the click event. I want the initialize event. So I'm going to come over here in my drop down here and select initialize. Now I can get rid of this because I'm not going to need it and start typing my code. Now I need to put some variables in here. So I'm going to start with my workbook variable for my cut list here. The cut list that eCabinets generates. I'm going to DM CL as workbook and enter and I need to set that so I'm going to go set CL equals and I need to put workbooks make sure you put workbooks not workbook in parentheses and quote and the cut list name and it needs to be spelled verbatim okay so cut list And in quote and in parentheses. Now I need a variable for my worksheets. So again, WS as worksheets. I need another variable for our checkboxes. DMCB as MS forms dot checkbox. Now I'm not going to set that right now. I'm going to do that in the loop we're getting ready to create. And I need one more variable for our checkbox number. So CV num as long. And we're going to start our loop. But before I do that, I need to let the program know what checkbox number to start with. So CV num equals 1. Let's start with checkbox 1. So now I can start my four next loop. So we go for each WS in cut list dot worksheets. Now I can set my checkbox. So I'm going to go set CB equals. What's it going to equal now? It's going to equal me, which me is the actual user form that we're typing this code in, not controls. And it's just telling it that this checkbox is actually a control in this user form. And I need to type the control name. So I'm going to hit parentheses and quote. Now what I want to do is I'm going to use part of this checkbox name here. If I come back in here and I click on checkbox 1 here, under name you see it's checkbox 1. We're going to use just this portion. And we're going to use the CB num variable and increment that by one each time. So it's going to be checkbox one, checkbox two, checkbox three, and so on. So let me get back in here to our code and I'm going to type checkbox. Make sure it's spelled exactly like it is in the name, checkbox name. And I need my ampersand to join this variable cd num. And in parentheses. Now, what this is doing is it's saying that, hey, CB actually equals the control checkbox control in this user form. It, its name is checkbox1 in this case because we're starting out with 1. Now, what we need to do is change the caption of that checkbox. So I'm going to say CB.caption equals WS worksheet dot name. So it's going to look at the actual worksheet name and put that in the caption. Now I need to increment our, our um, variable cbnum by one. So cbnum equals cbnum plus one. Make sure I got that right. So cbnum plus one. And I just need to go next worksheet. So next. WS 
Now, when I run my form, it should populate everything just fine. Let's see how that works. Let's come into our master worksheet here, our master workbook, and click on it. And you see how it put everything in here. Now, there is one thing that you need to realize. If this cut list right here is not open, you're going to get an error. And let me show you that. So I'm going to X out of this. And we're going to handle that error. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Run it again. You see we're getting a runtime error 9. Subscript out of range. Basically what this is saying is, hey, I can't find that workbook. It's either been renamed to something different, or it's just not open. So if I hit debug, it's going to automatically take me into our sub rectangle 1 click event. I'm going to reset that. And I'll show you how you can get into this. If you right click on this and you go to assign macro, and this is giving you Master Workbook XLB Rectangle 1 click, and you click on edit, and it'll bring you right in here. Now, what we need to do is put an error handler in here. So I'm going to say on error, go to. And I'm going to put a variable right here, ERR message. And I'm going to retype the RRMSG and put colon. And now I can do an if statement. I'm going to say if ERR dot number equals 9, then message box MSG BOX. And when I hit spaces asking me for a prompt, I need to start that out with quotes. And I just need to put something in here that's going to basically educate the user on, hey, you know, either this has been renamed or you haven't actually opened the, the cut list workbook. Um, and tell them what to do. Basically what it's saying is the, work, the workbook named cut list is not open or has been renamed. Click OK. Then in eCabinets cut list, click on export cut list to Excel and select open. So I need end quote here, and I'm going to hit comma, and I'm going to select BB critical. Now I need to exit the sub. So exit sub there. I just want to get out of the sub. So I can start over. Now I need end if. So let's see what happens when we click, click our rectangle there. So I'm going to click on it, and there we go. There's our error message. Click OK. Go into e cabinets. Bring it back up and open. So let's see what happens. Everything should work now. Or there's our uh, user form with all our cut list worksheet names listed. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can write the code to select every one of these in one shot and deselect all of them. And hey, if this video helps you, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my latest tips and tricks. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.